everyone, welcome to Bleeding Blue Shirts as we preview game six, Rangers and Hurricanes at the Garden coming up tonight. John Giano along with Steve Valaket. Uh, Stevie, I guess we'll start here. Uh, the Rangers have been here and done this uh, three times already. Yeah. What from the Penguins series in terms of staving off elimination can they borrow tonight? Uh, coming out of their comfort zone. I think that when you look back at game five, what the Rangers did, John, was they played in their comfort zone. They didn't really challenge anything. They didn't go after it. They didn't have a hard uh, will in the corners. Everything that was 50-50 was okay to lose. But that's not the case in an elimination game. And if they've learned anything from the Penguin series, in games five, six, and seven, there was a deep will to keep playing. And I think at some point, John, you look up and you realize there's only five teams left right now fighting for the Stanley Cup. That has to reside right here in a player and send a lot of energy to their legs. You know, this is something that you only have an opportunity to do this for so long, and it's so hard to be one of five, that that really has to be something that hits you right between the eyes before game number six here. So the other night we hear from Gerard Gallant post game, uh, something that I don't know that we would have expected. And also afterward, Gallant said he didn't tell the players that after the game, that they he thought they looked tired. Uh, tired is, is a, maybe a buzzword that can be uh, eye opening in, in any sport. Uh, how might tired translate tonight? And should we expect to not see that because of everything you just described? Very problematic to hear that. And that's just a coach's assessment immediately after the game and what he thought his players looked like, which was probably to him, skating in quicksand. Mm -hmm. But one thing you can't forget, John, is we're only halfway home right now. <laughs> right. That's it. There's still two more very long 15 day, for better or worse, series to be played. The players can't be tired. You just can't. And if the play looks tired, it's probably because mentally they were slowing themselves down um, in Carolina, haven't seemed to have the same jump as they've had at home. I expect to see a different team. Here's the one thing though that I've really uh, realized over dissecting game number five for the last, uh, well, 48 hours for better or worse. There has not been enough shots coming from the point. Now, the way I came to see this was that I'm looking through the different data that I collect and the Rangers, they haven't had any broken plays, they haven't had any rebounds, they haven't had any screens, comparatively to the other teams that are still playing. Uh, five screens in the series, and four broken plays, and five rebounds. It's not enough, John. Now, what you have to do when you look at these certain things is you go to the video and you start to say, all right, well, if we're not getting screens, broken plays, rebounds, are we getting point shots? And then I looked at that and there's only nine, nine point shots. Carolina's had 28 in the series. Shots coming from the point. So why aren't we getting shots from the point? Now it's a team game. The forwards have to get the puck on the cycle down low. They have to muscle it down there. They have to possess it long enough in the ozone to be able to get it to the points. The points then receive the puck. Their job is to get it through, whether with a quick shot or a delay, but what is Carolina doing? They've got two and sometimes three players in the shooting lane, either trying to deter it or block it. Mm -hmm. In that time, you've got Ranger forwards that are trying to get to the front of the net and they're either getting boxed out or fronted. So it's, again, it's a team concept, but when I look at the four check, the, the Ranger forwards have only had three chances off the four check, you know, and they have three times that for the Carolina Hurricanes team concept that really relies on these guys doing it for one another is really what you want to see in a collective effort in game six but it, this is not on the forwards it's not just on the goalie or just on the d this is a five-man unit with of course the safety valve and shesterkin being back there yeah. well, we've talked so much in this series stevie we've talked so much in these playoffs about the difference in teams when they're inside their own building and when they're not. Carolina hasn't won on the road in five games. They haven't lost at home. Rangers had a total of two goals in three games in Carolina, seven in two games at Madison Square Garden. So if the desperation level for both teams is the same, 
given the fact that maybe Carolina doesn't want to have to face another game seven if their hope is to play Tampa next, arrested Tampa. Uh, what do you think is the biggest key strategically beyond what you just talked about tonight, given maybe an, a level playing field for the urgency of both teams? Yeah, you know what it is, John? I, I don't think you can roll lines. Uh, if you want to keep Savannah Jad freed away from Stahl's line, it's completely shut him down. And, you know, you saw this last year with the Montreal Canadiens with Philip Deneau, how one player with one focus can really shut down a line that's very effective in each series and get themselves to the Stanley Cup final. They're not even really a great team, but they get to the Stanley Cup final last year. Right. Jordan Stahl has been really hard on the Savannah Jad line. It's really killed their production. So. What you can do at home that you can't do on the road is you can go, instead of going lines one, two, three, four, maybe you go line one, line two, back to line one, then three and four, back to line one. Just really mix them in so that they are at least throwing some confusion Carolina's way. Let them try and match that, but just throw that mix in and maybe that frees up Zabanjan a little bit more. Uh, Crowder gets a little more room out there. Hopefully that gives the Panarin line a little bit more space to do what they have to do, but Panarin's gotta be better. I mean, it does, I'm talking in team concept, but it does come down to player to player too. Uh, I was looking at this this morning. Panarin is leading this round of playoffs with giveaways per 60, okay? And uh, that's a guy that had 96 points in the regular season. He's got two assists in this series. He has to, he has to do what he did in game seven against the Penguins. He has to be the guy. The big guys have to step up. Everybody knows in the playoffs, your big guys have to not just neutralize the opposition's big guys, but they have to exceed what their output is. And playing with a lead has been vital in this series, has been vital in the playoffs. Uh, Rangers, for all of their resilience through 27 comeback wins in the regular season, uh, it, it would benefit them greatly to be able to take the lead before a raucous crowd tonight. It's going to be fun, Stevie. 7.30 for the pregame show uh, on MSG Networks and on MSG Go. And then the game at 8 o'clock is on ESPN as soon as it ends. I will be there. Steve will be there. Henrik Lundqvist rejoins us as well. The three of us will recap what happens. Rangers hope to keep their season alive for a game seven, which would be Monday, also at eight o'clock. Looking forward to it, Stevie. Thanks for this. Yeah, can't wait, buddy.